Good evening, everyone. This is Shane Gebauer with Brushy Mountain Bee Farm. I'd like to welcome you all this evening. Tonight we're going to be talking about some basic lip balm making. Uh, we're going to take you through a basic recipe and um, discuss the some some tricks along the way. It, before we get started, though, uh, lip balm making actually is is probably one of the easiest things to do. And, and if you're interested in trying to make a little money uh, off the craft of, of beekeeping, it's probably one of the easiest and, and most profitable things that you can do. It takes a very small amount of beeswax, some inexpensive ingredients, and yet uh, the profit margin can be very good. So if you're trying to sort of uh, supplement your, your beekeeping hobby with a, a source of revenue, lip balm is a great way to go, and it doesn't take, take very long at all. Um, the, the process that I'm going to take you through uh, here this evening to make, uh, you'll see that uh, I made about 25 tubes of lip balm. It took less than uh, an hour, and that included all the setup, all the, uh, the waiting for the ingredients to melt, the pouring, and, and even a little bit of cleanup. Um, and so it, it's, it's very uh, easy to do, very good way to make some money, and doesn't take a lot of time or effort. So let's, uh, let's get started. Uh, with with what we're going to be talking about and and first before we get into the actual process of making lip balm we need to have a little bit of an understanding about some of the ingredients that are going into it some of the most common you've got your liquid oils things such as olive oil is a great one it provides some UV protection uh, it soothes and helps heal drying skin so it's very good for the lips of course we know olive oil is is um, a food grade oil, so it's perfectly fine for something that's going to come in contact with your lips and, and perhaps you're going to get a little bit ingested. Sweet almond oil, same thing, it softens the skin. It, uh, it, sweet almond oil, it, uh, it doesn't necessarily help too much with the moisturizing, but it does help soften the skin um, and it also is very easily absorbed and leaves very little residue. So it also is good for things like um, uh, lotions and balms and things like that that you may apply to your skin besides just lips. The, the, the one thing that uh, we need to keep in mind is that the lips, when we're talking about lip balm and, and something to go on the lips, the lips don't have oil glands like we do elsewhere on our skin that sort of naturally secretes a little bit of skin oil to help prevent the drying, the cracking, and, and, and that skin oil helps with moisturization. The lips don't have that, and so they're very susceptible to being chapped, very susceptible to drying out, and they also don't have as, as much protection as other parts of our body that the skin affords. And so you want something then that's going to provide sort of a layer of protection and something that's also going to provide a little bit of moisturizing quality to those lips uh, if, if they're getting chapped. In this time of year, uh, certainly that is an issue. The other uh, ingredients, we've got solid oils and butter. So we've got coconut oil, which is a solid at room temperature. This is an excellent moisturizer, uh, very good uh, for the skin. We've got shea butter, which is also a solid. It's, uh, it's got the consistency similar to butter uh, as, as the name implies. It's great for wrinkles and scars. Uh, it's excellent for uh, relieving irritation of the skin. It's fantastic for uh, psoriasis or eczema. When I, whenever I make um, uh, skin lotion, I always throw in a little bit of shea butter. Uh, we've got uh, cocoa butter, which is a little bit harder than shea butter. It's a little bit more of a brittle, but still you can sort of break it apart fairly easily. But it's it's considered like a, a, a brittle um, a brittle oil or butter. It's often got that uh, nutty aroma associated with that chocolate type odor. Even if it's a deodorized version of cocoa butter, it still has a little faint odor, which can be very nice and, and even uh, exaggerated with some essential oils and enhanced with essential oils if you choose to do so. Um, it also is excellent for, for moisturizing. And then other ingredients, we've got beeswax. Uh, which of course adds a very, very nice protective barrier to the lips. Remember that uh, the lips don't have that sort of protective layer of skin 
that uh, we've got elsewhere on our body. So if we could provide some sort of protective barrier, the beeswax is very good for that. And it also is a hardener. These other oils and butters that I mentioned are, are either a liquid at room temperature or fairly soft. And so you want something that's going to harden that those other ingredients up a bit because oftentimes people are carrying lip balms in their pockets. Uh, and, and of course, the last thing you would want is, is something that's going to melt at, uh, at, at something close to body temperature and, uh, or less, of course, uh, and therefore sort of melt in a person's pocket. The trade-off there, though, is you do want something that is, is maybe just a, uh, with a melting point just a little bit higher than, than body temperature because you, as you apply it to the lips, you don't want to have to sort of s to rub it on you almost want it to sort of melt on, so you want it fairly close to that body temperature without being too low so that you have a softness issue. And, and it's also worth mentioning too that depending on what type of container you're going to put this in, and we'll talk about packaging later on, but you may want to tweak your recipe a little bit. If you're putting it in a chapstick tube where you're physically going to be uh, directly applying it to your lips, you may want something that uh, can be is a little bit harder, whereas because you're going to actually be physically rubbing on the chapstick onto your lips. But if you're putting some putting it in a tin, where maybe you're going to sort of rub it onto your finger, and then use your finger to apply it to your lips, you may want something a little bit softer, so you can almost sort of pick it up. Uh, with your finger a little bit easier and then rub it onto your finger. So depending on your packaging, you may want to tweak your formula, your recipe a little bit and, and choosing uh, your container to suit that recipe. Of course, honey. Honey has fantastic properties. It adds a little bit of sweetness to the, to the lip balm because inevitably you're going to apply this to your lips. People lick their lips um, periodically and so to have a little bit of sweetness there is, is not at all a problem. Of course there are health properties associated with honey so adding a little bit of honey in there is a fantastic idea and again it doesn't take much beeswax or honey in these recipes so with very little from your hives you can make quite a bit of product. Vitamin E, um, this is uh, an antioxidant um, which is very good. It helps with preserving of the, uh, the, the chapstick. You can have uh, oils that go rancid if it sits for too long. So olive oil can go rancid if it sits for too long. The shea butter, uh, the coconut oil, the, the cocoa butter, all those things have the potential. They do have a shelf life. They have the potential to go rancid. And so adding a little bit of vitamin E in there as a preservative is, a, is an excellent way to keep the product a little bit longer. And then essential oils. Now there is a difference between essential oils and fragrance oils. I always like the essential oils for anything that's going to be applied to the skin. And you have to be very cautious here because they are quite potent so you never want to apply essential oils directly to the skin by themselves but incorporated into lip balms, lotions, balms, uh, things like that in, in, uh, in, in limits can be a very nice way to add a, a fragrance to the uh, product. Now the difference between essential oil and a fragrance oil, essential oils are natural distillations from the, the source. So for example, spearmint, which I used in um, the recipe that, uh, that I'm going to show you here in a second. It's distilled from the spearmint uh, mint plant. It's a natural distillation, so rose essential oil would be a natural distillation from rose petals, as opposed to fragrance oils, which are suitable for things like candles, and, and you could use them in soaps, but it, it, it's not a natural distillation. It's a synthetically made uh, fragrance oil. Um, for, so, so I always opt for the essential oils when I'm making lip balms, again, because it's a natural product. And if you're going to be licking your lips and potentially consuming trace amounts of that uh, essential oil, you want to make sure it's safe. So essential oils as opposed to fragrance oils. And then maybe you want to add a little bit of colorant. And you can do uh, several things here. You can add several colorants, several ways of coloring your, your, your lip balms, I should say. You can uh, take um, a little bit of uh, um, lipstick, 
So if you if you want a, a red chapstick, you can take a little bit of, of red lipstick and shave a little bit of that into the uh, into the the lip balm while it's melting to add a little bit of color. There are also um, powdered colorants that we've got in our catalog that you can add to to color the product. So there's different ways that you can you can do it. I I prefer to just leave mine sort of the natural color that results from the mix, mixing of the various oils, butters, and and beeswax. Um, the beeswax I have pictured here uh, the blocks of of yellow beeswax that we sell for candle and, and, and soap making. Some people prefer to use the white beeswax pearls as they're referred to. Those white beeswax pearls, again it's a, it's a white beeswax, so it's not going to um, add any color to your, uh, to your chapstick. So if you want a, uh, or to your lip balm, so if you want sort of a purer color uh, and you don't want that yellow color bleeding in from the beeswax, you can use the white beeswax pearls. But again, we're trying to do this uh, with products from our hive. And so our beeswax that we harvest from our hive, unless we sort of take drastic measures, um, it, it doesn't really take drastic measures, but you could bleach it with the sun, you could bleach it with uh, some lemon oil, um, but then you're adding potential for fragrance there. Um, you can actually bleach it, which some people do, but we don't want necessarily want to do that. We want to have a natural product, and so most of our beeswax is going to be a color something like this. But you do want to get, obviously, clean it up. You want to get any bee legs that may be in there or bee wings that may be in there um, filtered out, and, and you want a pure beeswax with a lot of propolis and things like that. So you do want to process your wax, but it's going to be that natural color. The packaging, I mentioned uh, you want to sort of tweak your recipe based on the packaging that you're going to, uh, to use. So there's different types of, of packaging out there that, uh, that you're, you're able to use if you'd like. Of course, the most common, and what I'm going to show here are these lip balm tubes that are clear. They've got the little crank at the, uh, at the bottom that sort of feed it up. You can see that plunger right in here. Um, that uh, as you twist the base, it feeds up, just like the familiar tubes uh, that we, we all know. And of course, they come with caps. The clear pot, as it's called, this holds about a quarter uh, of an ounce, or a tin with a, with a tight-fitting metal tin. Uh, some people like this uh, because you can't necessarily see the, be, the, uh, the lip balm, but some people like the clear. But it does sort of get gummed up and messy, so when you, when you look at it, now it's a nice clear container, but once you put the uh, the lip balm in there, it starts to get. You'll see the smudges more. It'll be less attractive if you're trying to come up with sort of a real upscale type product. Um, so, you, but you want to consider your packaging when you're considering your recipe. And here's our basic recipe for the evening. This uh, I used about an ounce uh, of beeswax. Uh, about a half an ounce of coconut oil, about four ounces of olive oil. I put in a, just a little bit of honey and uh, two vitamin E capsules and about 20 drops of essential oil. And as I mentioned, I use the spearmint. Now, all of this you can vary slightly. So if you want a little bit harder uh, beeswax, actually when I brought the tubes that I had made around to the office, you know, I was talking with one person. She said, I like my my, uh, I don't, rather, I don't like my, my lip balm too hard. And so if, if, you, if you're one of those people that likes a softer lip balm, then you can cut back on your beeswax a little bit. If you like a harder lip balm, you can add a little bit of beeswax into it. And, and for your first time, um, what I suggest is, and we'll get to this in a second, is once you have all your ingredients mixed together, minus the, the vitamin E and, and the essential oils, but once you have these, these first four mixed together and melted, you can just take, take, take a bit of time and let that uh, mixture cool to room temperature. Okay, so basically you're letting it harden in your melting pot, and then you can test the hardness. And there's little tricks you can do sort of without having to let it, the entire batch cool. But that way you know exactly what you're going to get. And, and it doesn't take much time to liquefy those ingredients again, add a little bit more beeswax, 
Uh, maybe add a little bit more olive oil if you want uh, a little bit softer uh, lip balm. But there's ways that you can sort of tweak this recipe and, and ensure that you get a product that you're going to like before you go ahead and pour all those tubes. So there's our basic our basic recipe. And, this, and, and as far as the essential oil, uh, those 20 drops, it was a, it, it's a very faint, fairly faint odor about it. So maybe you like something a little bit more potent, so you would want to go to 30, maybe 40 drops. Um, but keep in mind, as you add that liquid, it's going to make a softer lip balm, so you may have to add a little bit more beeswax as well. Here's our setup. Here's my setup for doing this. Uh, I did this up in our showroom. We've got some nice stainless steel tables up there. I've got um, uh, my fill tray, which will show closer up. If you're doing chapstick tube, chapsticks, chap, chapstick tubes, uh, this this fill tray is is almost a necessity. You can uh, fill those tubes without a fill tray, but it's it's dangerous be, uh, because you may very easily spill, and it's very tedious as well. So this is a fantastic little device. Of course, I've got my my scale. You can see my little chunk of of beeswax in there. Here are my vitamin E capsules that uh, it looks like I, I, you, I've got a, the 100 or rather 1,000 milligrams, so that'll give you a sense of size for those two capsules. This is my, my pour pot, and it's also, you'll see in a second, what I'm using for my double boiler. So I've got my, my pot over here with just a little bit of water in here. Um, and I'm just simply going to put my ingredients in this pour pot and then put the pour pot up into my, my water bath to melt my oils. I never want to melt oils directly on the burner. Of course, my, my burner, essential oil, the olive oil. Uh, I don't have the, um, the coconut oil that, uh, pictured here, but uh, we threw a little coconut oil in there too. So um, pretty easy, pretty basic, pretty straightforward. Most of these things you would have uh, around your house. A few exceptions might be the fill tray, but again, it's not it's not a imperative, but it does make life very, very easy if you're doing the tubes. Uh, most people have some sort of scale in their house. Uh, a pour pot, this could be as simple as a, uh, a, a metal soup can uh, that you sort of crimp the lid to create this little pour area. Uh, a basic pot that you can put some water in and a burner. Uh, and then, of course, some of the ingredients. So it's a very basic uh, setup, very easy setup. Um, which you uh, most of us have uh, in the uh, in the kitchens. So here you can see me putting that uh, that pour pot in the double boiler. Uh, let me just go back up here for a second. The recipe this is a one quart pour pot. Um, it stands maybe about four inches tall, and when all the ingredients were melted, it only filled about that much of the. Um, the pour pot. So really, I only have maybe about an inch of water in here. So that'll give you some indication that it takes very little time to melt these. And yet, this recipe makes about uh, 25 of these chapstick tubes. So um, it, it goes a long way. So again, here's my setup. I'm lowering that, uh, that pour pot down into my water bath creating that double boiler situation. Again, you never want to heat oils directly on the stove. You always want to use a double boiler uh, for fire hazard. Um, you want to have that, uh, that water doing the warming, not the, the element of the stove. Uh, that, uh, that, that can be really messy. We're melting the ingredients. So here's my olive oil. You can see the, um, this is the, uh, the cocoa butter with some beeswax in here. Uh, and of course, the olive oil is is liquid at room temperature, so it gives it something to melt into. You can see the the water bath here on the side. We're looking right down into the pot. And I mentioned earlier about tweaking your uh, recipe, and so this would be the opportunity. You can see now my 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 coconut oils uh, melted. Most of my beeswax is melted. What I've done here is I've dipped my finger down into the, uh, the, the melted ingredients before I did anything. And you just take your finger out. You can see the little drop of lip balm sort of hanging off my finger there. And you just let it cool. You let it cool and you, you know, blow on it. And basically now that, that 
uh, material, that lip balm, is on my finger. It's basically at body temperature, which is good. I know it's going to so be solid now at my body temperature. And you can get a sense of how hard or soft your lip balm is going to be. And if you want to harden it up, you can add a little bit of uh, beeswax into it. So you can see I'm adding a couple of these beeswax flakes, and you can see some of the, the beeswax down in there to sort of harden up the, uh, the recipe a bit to create a little bit harder beeswax. Now, one of the things that I'll, I'll mention here is most of us, when we're processing our beeswax, we may be doing it in a solar melter. We may be doing it in a, in a double boiler like this, but what we end up with as beekeepers is a chunk of beeswax, a solid block like we saw in the, in the previous slides of beeswax. It's very difficult to get small pieces off of that without having to you know, crack it with a hammer or cut it with a saw or something like that. So what I suggest to people is they, uh, they melt some of their beeswax and you can get like a, a, a shallow uh, baking pan you can put, you can line that baking pan with waxed paper. So you melt your beeswax and then pour a very, very thin layer of that beeswax on that waxed paper. You let it cool, and now what you've got is is this this sort of flat sheet of beeswax. And when it and when it cools, of course, you can easily peel it off that waxed paper. And it's very easy then to sort of break it up into these sort of flake-like pieces. Rather than trying to smack a block with a hammer and, get it, and trying to get small pieces, by pouring it into a sheet like that that's only maybe an eighth of an inch thick, it's very easy to break off pieces. It also helps with the weighing of your beeswax, um, where you may have a chunk in there, but maybe it's just shy of an ounce that the recipe is calling for. And so you need to add just a few pieces. And trying to break a piece off from a block, it's difficult to get just the right size piece to meet the quantity necessary for your recipe. So having these tiny pieces that are easily broken up uh, can make it very easy. So you can see here I'm, again, adding them into the recipe to harden it off just a little bit. I like my lip balms just a little bit on the hard side. And, and then I can test it. And if you want to know what it's like, uh, sort of at room temperature, you can take this little drop that's hanging from my finger and before it cools, you can sort of dab the table to put a little drop on the table and let it cool on the table and then sort of rub it with your finger to get a sense of what it might be like if you're rubbing your, um, if you're rubbing the tin to, for, because you're putting it in a tin or something like that, you can, you can rub it off the table and get a sense of what it's going to feel like, how easily it's going to come out of that tin, what it's going to feel like applying to your lips, etc. So this is, a, this is the opportunity to do those tests and adjustments. Here we are doing the so-called additives. I've got that uh, vitamin E capsule right here, and I'm just using a peer, pair of uh, household scissors to just nip the, the very tip of this, this capsule, you can see it in, my, in between my fingers here, this gel capsule filled with the vitamin E oil, just snipping the tip and then simply squeezing it into the, um, into the, uh, the, the inner pot there that's got my oils and beeswax melted in it. This is something you want to do your additives at the very end, and you want to make sure that um, your, your, uh, your solution your melted lip balm now is uh, cooled to pouring temperature. And the reason for that is that, uh, when, especially when you add the essential oils, if it's too hot, you will actually volatize the essential oil and drive off a lot of the fragrance. And so you want it basically cooled down just to uh, pouring temperature, which would be just a little bit above its melting point. Um, and so you're going to be looking at depending on your recipe, probably around the 100 degree neighborhood um, that you want this thing, cool, your, your solution cooled down to so that you don't uh, evaporate, basically, your, uh, your essential oils. This next slide, I have to put a little disclaimer on. It's, uh, you can see I'm just sort of pouring, crudely pouring. I don't advocate this 
uh, an eyedropper. I didn't have one at work, unfortunately, so I had to wing it. Um, you can very carefully pour these small uh, uh, glass jars of, of essential oil, but an eyedropper is definitely the way to go for more precise measurements. And again, there's lots of different types. There's lemongrass, there's lavender, eucalyptus, uh, tree, uh, tea tree, peppermint, spearmint, um, and, and several others um, that you can add in there depending on what you're looking for. And again, you want to add these at the very tail end just before you pour your, um, your lip balm. The, uh, the next, we need to fill it. So I've lifted my, my pour pot with my hands in the picture there. You can get a sense of scale of this pour pot. It's not a very big pour pot. But one of the first things you want to do before you start to pour anything, whether it be a tin, one of those, those little glass or plastic pots, as they're called, or the, the lip balm tubes, you want to wipe dry your pour pot. Because the last thing you want to have happen is as you're going over your containers, filling them, have a drop of water, because this was in the water bath, you don't want to have a drop of water falling off your pour pot into one of those tubes, you not notice it, and, and you get a defective product. So use a paper towel or, or, or a dish rag or something like that to wipe the, the excess water off so you don't have to worry about uh, that dropping into a container. And I always keep it handy right uh, sort of holding the pour pot like I am right here so that as I stop and maybe there's a little drip of, of lip balm up here on the, uh, the tip here on the pouring area, I can just simply wipe that off real quick so I don't make a mess and drip on my counter or on the floor or something like that. So keep that, uh, that rag or, or paper towel handy uh, as you go through the process. So the next, oh, there we go. So now we're actually pouring and you can see I'm, I'm not being very careful here as I'm filling my tubes because what this does is these tubes, you can actually see the upper rim of each one of these tubes that I haven't filled yet right up to the underside of this tray. And you can see that there's a little bit of a, a depression where all these tubes are. So any sort of spillage gets contained in this area. You can see it's run up right to the edge here, but it doesn't spill all over the place. And so you can be a little lackadaisical with your pouring, as I'm doing here. I'm not being very diligent about hitting my target. And you can see I've got a lot of overflow. That's OK, because it's all captured with this uh, filling tray. So this thing really is a lifesaver. And once you've, they've, uh, you've poured everything off, you've filled up your tubes, um, you've got, uh, you're ready to pull them off. Oops, I think I missed a slide there. I think I'm, um, um, let's see here. There we go. Let's, oops, let's go back. Yes. So we're filling them. We wait for them to cool. And then you just simply take this, uh, this plastic putty knife and it just simply uh, scrapes the top of the tubes clean. You scrape up all your, uh, your lip balm. And what you can do with this then is everything you scrape up, you can just throw right back into that pour pot. And if you wanted to, you could just remelt it, come back in, and, and refill some of these, these tubes here. So you use it up uh, completely. Um, so it makes things very neat and, neat and handy. Once everything's cooled, you simply pull the tubes out of the filling tray, and you can see you've got a nice clean tube that if you, if you make sure your hands are clean and not oily from this process, it'll keep your tube here. Oops. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. There we go. It'll keep your tube here very clean, very neat. Uh, you won't get oily residue on it. So if you're going to sell these, of course, you want that professional appearance about it. So having oily residue on the outside of your, of your chapstick tube, it's not very professional. And so it, it keeps things very clean and neat. One thing that I failed to mention that I just want to go back to, before you pour these, it is worth taking the time to go through all these tubes and just make sure that this, oh dear, what is going on here? I just lost my screen, I apologize. Uh-oh. I seem to have frozen. I apologize.
apologize for this, folks. Well, my cursor is still working. There we go. All right. Let's not do that again. Everyone still here? It seems so. Sorry about that. Let's um, just go back. So before you start pouring, it's worth checking all of these plungers that are in the bottom to make sure that they're all that they're all the way down. So actually, as you're loading this filling tray, uh, and before you pour, make sure all those plungers are screwed down. When these tubes come uh, from the manufacturer, they all are in that down position. But sometimes, as they're being shipped, as they're bouncing around, <clears throat> excuse me, a couple of them may get cranked up a little bit. And in fact, I, as I was doing this, as I was loading up this tray, I did find one that was that had been cranked up about halfway, um, for whatever reason it, it was. And so you just want to you want to make sure that you don't have a half a stick of chapstick. So you want to make sure all those plungers are are screwed down uh, completely. Okay. Of course, then once you put a cap on. Now, one thing that I I don't have a picture of here is that if you're going to sell these, uh, you'll have to label them. What a lot of people do with labeling is just simply pick up Avery uh, address labels. You can run it through your um, your home inkjet printer and apply a label with uh, the ingredients on there. You'll need to have your ingredients, uh, maybe your contact information, maybe your business name. If, if you've got a business name, uh, you'll want to have that uh, on there. And, and then also a heat shrink uh, sleeve because there's no way to tamper proof that lid without actually uh, heat shrinking it to the, uh, the tube. And so we do have clear heat shrinks that uh, simply slide over this, take a, a hair dryer or a heat gun and, and melt it down uh, so it, melt it so it shrinks down around the tube. A word of caution you don't want to use uh, a heat gun too close to these tubes because as you're hitting it uh, to melt that heat shrink uh, sleeve, if you're, if you're not careful, you can actually melt the, uh, the, the lip balm that's inside there. Now, it's inside the tube, so you probably won't have too much of a, uh, of a problem, but if you hit it real quick with that gun and you do end up melting it and then that you sort of, and don't notice it, sort of set that, tube aside or maybe lay it down uh, and it's still a little bit soft, it may sort of ooze out into the cap a little bit. So you want to be careful with that. You just want to hit it quickly enough to melt that heat shrink sleeve around the cap and around the tube to form that tamper-proof uh, seal. The, the plastic also does, uh, the, the plastic tube also uh, affords a little bit of insulation. So it's not too common an issue, but you do, it can happen, so you do need to be aware of it. Once you've got it all uh, poured up, that's pretty much it, and, and you're ready to go. So it, like I said, it's incredibly easy uh, to do. It doesn't take a lot of uh, time and energy, a lot of ingredients, things that we typically have around the house. And so now what I'd like to do is uh, let me get my questions pulled up here because uh, I know some, some people have already typed in questions. If you'd like to ask a question, there should be a, a, a window pane um, on the side that, uh, that you can type in uh, a question. And uh, I'll do my best to, to answer it. Let's see here. Pull that up. So um, we've got, uh, we've got uh, a question that's coming in about uh, the coloring and how best to color uh, if using the, um, um, the lipstick. It all depends on the, uh, the intensity of the color that you want. The other thing that you're going to be fighting is if you are using your, your own sort of raw beeswax, of course, you've already got that color incorporated into your, your lip balm. 
And so if you do want to have a nice bright red or, or you know, blue, yellow, whatever the case may be. Well, yellow is not a good example because the beeswax already sort of that yellowish tint. But if you want a bright red, it might be better to use the white beeswax pearls because there you're dealing with the white and you can end up with a pure red. But if, you've, if you're using that, if I go back up here, you can see the color that I've got here, sort of this very pale yellow. It's because I've already got this sort of pale colored yellow from that beeswax primarily, to make a pure white, or rather a pure red, it's going to be difficult because I'm already fighting this yellow color. Um, and so you're, you'll have to be cautious um, about that. So you may want to use that, um, that uh, um, uh, beeswax, the white beeswax pearls if you're doing that. Uh, one question, are the measurements of the ingredients by weight or by volume? I did them by weight. Um, so uh, what I did, if I go back up to um, this, oops, this right here, what I did is, you can see my scale. I have my beeswax in this bowl that comes with the scale. Uh, what I did was I put this, this pour pot on my scale without the bowl. I teared it so that it was at zero with the, uh, the pour pot on there. And then our, our, when we have our um, oils packaged here at the bee farm, we put these uh, flip top lids on them. And so it was easy enough to slowly pour in some of the olive oil in there until I got to, uh, to the four ounces. And then, so what you don't see is I actually have the olive oil. You can see I've already poured some out. It's already in my pour pot here. And so I weighed that up. So you can do, do it that way. Um, let's see, do you know regulations requiring all ingredients to be listed or is it personal preference uh, of the maker? It, uh, you do have to have your ingredients listed if you're going to sell it, yes. Um, do you have a sense how long this recipe will last? Is it good to put a date on it or date on it for expiration? Um, you could put a date of, of may, uh, produced, uh, a lot of places are doing that, produced on so that you know, but really there's, there's, it's going to last a while. Honestly, I have in my pocket right now a tube of chapstick because I don't use much in the summertime, mostly in the wintertime. Um, is when I have problems. So I'm carrying it now. I made this tube of chapstick. Um, it was two years ago. Or I can't remember if it was last Christmas or the year before. So it's either a year or two old, and it's fine. So um, it, it's, it, it lasts for quite a while, but I'm not qualified to say when it would be expired. So you may want to just put on a date in which it was sort of manufactured, so to speak. Um, do you mix the formula in the pot or just let it melt? Um, what I did is I just sort of sort of threw the ingredients in there and to expedite the process, <clears throat> excuse me, I just reached in there and uh, just sort of sloshed, for lack of a better word, sloshed the, uh, the chunks of beeswax around in that now warming olive oil uh, to help facilitate the melting process to, just so it didn't take quite as long. You don't uh, want this to get too hot in here. Um, there's, uh, you, I never let that water really come to any sort of boil. It steamed a little bit, but it never came to a rolling boil. Uh, the reason for that is, of course, is I've got this tiny little pour pot in this big pot, and there's potential as the, the water boils, it sort of splashes up into the, my smaller pour pot. So you just want to warm it gently and slowly, but you can splash it around there to sort of facilitate the process a little bit. Um, does Brushy Mountain carry all the items needed to make lip balms, uh, molds, caps, shrink wraps, etc.? Yes. Everything you see right here, with the exception of the vitamin E, we've got. Um, well, I should say we don't have the, I, I misspoke there. I was a bit, a bit overzealous in that response. Let me clarify that one a little bit. We don't carry the, the, uh, this burner. Uh, this the heating element here, this this stove or countertop uh, warmer. This you can pick up at uh, a local big box store, um, Walmart, Kmart, Sears, uh, J.C. Penney probably has them, something like that. These these you can pick up 
uh, for around $50, a little two burner uh, warming plate like this. You, but you can do it on your stove if you'd like, especially if you're careful um, and with about spilling, you can, you can put this pot on your stove to create your water bath. Um, the, the other thing that we don't uh, offer in our catalog is the pot. But again, if you're careful and don't spill your beeswax in here, making it difficult to clean up, you can use a regular stock pot. Now, the things that we do have, we've got the olive oil, we have the coconut oil, the beeswax, but hopefully you'll be using your own beeswax. We've got the essential oils, this pour pot, the scale, and, and the tubes, everything that I showed you before, the pot, the little clear pot, the tins, et cetera, the shrink wraps we've got. Okay. Um, uh, does it make a difference if the uh, olive oil is extra virgin or regular? There's, there's a bit of opinions out there. Um, I am not discerning enough to say, ooh, this person used extra virgin and, and this person did not. Um, but there are some uh, people that are, are much more uh, opinionated and, and maybe discerning to say that you should use extra virgin uh, olive oil. But um, uh, really, I, I could not tell the difference if you used if in a side-by-side -side comparison. Uh, let's see, do you have to be concerned about pouring too hot a liquid into the tubes and having them leak or distorted? Yes. That's why I never let my water really come to a, a boil because if it's boiling, of course, it's at 12, uh, uh, rather 212 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. So potentially my oils could get up that high and, and at, if I were to pour at that temperature, one, uh, I would drive off a lot of my essential oil. Uh, or most of it, it would just vaporize because uh, it, of the hot liquid. And two, I do run the risk, not so much of leakage, but distorting the plastic. So you want it just, uh, you know, again, probably uh, just around 120-ish degrees, depending on your recipe, nothing warmer than that, and you should be fine. Um, you, you saw where I actually dipped my finger into that, that liquid, so it wasn't all that hot. Um, it was it was easy enough for me to put my fingertip in there without burning myself. Do you clean the tubes before use? If you wanted to, you could wash them, um, but typically uh, people don't. Um, how do you clean your pour pots? Use different pots for different essential oils. The what I do with this is is um, I put it when I was done. I put it back into the hot water bath and. Uh, uh, liquefied any sort of residual lip balm that may have been there and then just used a rag to wipe out as much as possible um, and and I did that a few times that gets the bulk of it and then all we're dealing with here are oils and grease if you will and so uh, you can see this is our sink right over here uh, I used a little bit of Dawn dish, dish soap uh, to wash this uh, up and, and got it back to basically brand new condition. And so you don't necessarily have to have different pots for different uh, essential oils um, unless you're doing multiple batches at a time. Um, using the, can you provide a little bit more information about using the tins as opposed to the tubes? So let me go back up. Um, up if I can to this picture. So you've got the tins and, and, and I've sort of hodgepodge these things together so they're not necessarily in scale to one another. But you've got your clear, what they call a clear pot, uh, a metal tin that's got this, this tight fitting um, uh, lid or the tubes. Really the only, the only difference uh, would be um, ease of filling. I find the tubes much easier to fill, especially well, if if using that uh, that that fill tray. So in that sense, it's much easier because this this thing, um, both of these actually are about the size of a quarter, and so while it's not terribly difficult to to fill them, it can be a little bit of a challenge, and also trying to get it to the right level 
in these can be a little bit of a challenge. Whereas with the tubes, with that fill tray, you just fill it. And if you overfill them, that's okay because you're going to scrape the excess off the top with that uh, little putty knife. The other thing to keep in mind, though, is is the 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 consistency, uh, the softness or hardness of your lip balm. Um, I, me personally, I like to have it a little softer uh, in in these two containers because what people do, of course, is they take the lid off, they rub their finger in there, and then apply it to their lips. Well, if you've got a really hard lip balm, it's difficult to get enough material on your finger then to transfer onto your lips. And so I like to have these just a little bit softer um, so that it comes onto the finger a little bit easier and therefore I can get adequate coverage on, on the lips. Um, so that, that, that's uh, my, my take on containers. Um, how long does it take to shrink the <coughs> wrapper with a hair dryer? Um, really it only takes a matter of a, a, a few seconds um, if you've got a good hair dryer. Um, you'll see it start to shrink down uh, essentially uh, immediately. It, it doesn't take much long at all. Probably all total by the time you're done, 10, 15 seconds. Um, let's see. Uh, you can, is, is olive oil regular cooking oil from the grocery store? Can you use canola or other oil? You can, sure. Uh, it is regular. We sell olive oil, but you can use olive oil off your, your countertop that you use for cooking. Um, you can, uh, that's not a problem. You can use canola oil. Uh, you can use other types of oil. Um, sunflower oil is another common one. Uh, some people use castor oil, uh, but just keep in mind that those oils that that uh, you're going to have to either find a recipe to start with that uses those oils, or you're going to have to do some trial and error testing um, with with this recipe if you substitute those in for the olive oil, just because they have different characteristics, they have different melt points, and it's going to influence the the hardness then of your lip balm. So. Um, um, you've got to sort of play with it that way. Can we see the recipe again? Sure. Let me go back up. Where was it? Oops. Is it? That's at the beginning. It was after that. There, there it is. Okay, so I'll just leave this up here for a second so you can see the recipe. Um, are there shrink wrap t uh, uh, the shrink wraps for the tins or pots uh, that you sell? Uh, there are not, unfortunately. There are not. Um, let's see. We did that one. Is there a specific Avery label that is used? Um, it, mo they're usually uh, address labels, and, and I don't know the specific type. But if you just go on, on, to, um, uh, on to like a Staples or Office Depot or, or Office Max website, um, you should be able to to pull one up fairly easily, and you're going to want a an Avery label that is is the I'm actually measuring my lip balm tube here that I just pulled out of my pocket. The tube um, where you would be applying the label, you wouldn't want anything bigger than an inch and three quarters by roughly uh, that's that's the height, an inch and three quarters and then sort of the circumference to wrap around um, if you if you didn't want it to overlap uh, it would be about two inches so an inch and three quarter label by two inches uh, would give you a good coverage on a on a tube and I, like I said I just measured the one that I pulled out of my pocket uh, let's see We don't sell labels for tins. Um, is your presentation package available offline? You mean this, uh, I assume by that you mean this, this webinar. I do record them. I am recording this right now, and I will be posting it up to our website. Um, if, you're, if you mean sort of this recipe, this, this, this as, a, as a package, we do have a lip balm kit that comes with beeswax, comes with uh, 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 sweet almond oil. It comes with a different recipe than this one. 
Um, it comes with, I think there's some shea butter in there. It comes with both tubes and um, little the, the pots and uh, labels to go on the tubes. Um, and what, oh, some essential, uh, some uh, some uh, fragrance, uh, some essential oils um, to add. I think it comes with, uh, gosh, I should know this. Two or three different, or three or four rather, different flavors that you can you can add to those. So that's a great way to to get started. I think it's like twenty four dollars for that that kit. Um, please go over the coloring options again. Again, it's you could use something like just simple lipstick. Um, that uh, in, in my case I would um, well in my case I would not want to go raid my wife's my, uh, lipstick stash because what you would do is cut a piece off and I'm sure that would get me in trouble and so I would request politely that my wife pick out a nice shade the next time she's in the makeup area and uh, and I would use that as a dedicated uh, lipstick color that you can just sort of shave or cut some pieces off so that uh, it, it colors your, your lip balm. Um, we also do have colorants available in our catalog that's a food grade colorant that you can add to, to lip balms or soaps or things like that. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Let's... Uh, vi uh, vitamin E capsules have uh, several ingredients. Do you need to list them all or just uh, list vitamin E? Just vi the one that I have, I, unfortunately I brought it back home. Um, I honestly didn't look at the ingredients on it, but uh, I'm, not, I'm not certain if there's a bunch of other stuff in there. But I think if you just listed vitamin E, you'd be okay. What about uh, using a microwave? That is a fairly common practice where you put all these things into a, like a Pyrex dish and, and melt it in the microwave. This is a, a personal thing. I'm not a big fan of microwaves, so I try and not to use them um, if I can avoid it. So I always go for the, uh, the hot water bath um, when making uh, my, my lip balms or lotions. <clears throat> what uh, essential oil is the most popular? Um, for lip balms, probably the spearmint or the uh, the, the peppermint. Um, for the uh, but uh, lavender is a popular one. Uh, those would probably be the, the sort of the three most popular. Uh, you get use the essential oils, some of the other fl other flavors, if you will, when you get into soaps like the the tea tree, uh, the lemongrass uh, probably wouldn't be bad, or the lemon. Um, but they're not quite as, as popular. Probably the spearmints uh, the most. Um, do you sell shea butter and coconut oil separately from the kit? Yes, we do. Um, we've got uh, we've got palm oil, coconut oil, sweet almond oil, olive oil, shea butter, and cocoa butter um, as our uh, our oils and, and butter options. Uh, that's available in our catalog and online. Will the ink on the Avery labels run if it gets wet uh, or some of the product gets on it? Yeah, unfortunately it will. Most inks that, uh, that are in inkjet printers will run if they, they get damp. Um, but again, if you're using that uh, fill tray and you've got your hands clean after, after handling things, um, the tubes will be fairly clean. And once you put that heat shrink seal uh, sleeve on there, if you're going to do that, it's it's protected. And and really the the goal is to make sure that it's in in good selling condition when uh, the customer picks it up and they're able to read the ingredients. Inevitably, just about any label that uh, that you put on these things, once someone puts it in their pocket and it sort of is abrading inside the pocket, is going to either wear slightly. And, and its uh, readability will be compromised, or um, it's going to smear a little bit. So um, it's it's that's a difficult one to deal with. Uh, cocoa butter is it uh, just used for lotions and creams, or can it be used for other items? It can be used for other items. Um, uh, you could incorporate it into soap. I don't know what other items uh, you might want to uh, to use it on, but uh, sure you can. Um, how long do you wait before removing the tubes from the tray? Um, 
can they get too hard to come out? Can they get too hard to come out? Um, they, uh, no, it, it's not going to become an issue if you let it sit there overnight that the, it'll be difficult to remove. Um, because again, they sort of, it's, it, it's sort of hard to explain, but the tubes, you know, if, if, you, if you've got a, a chapstick tube, and I, again, I still have mine right in my hand, when you put the lid, the cap on that tube, it sort of snaps on, right? There's a little ridge there, and I'm going to hold it up to my microphone. You might be able to, might be able to hear it, how it snaps on. Well, that ridge on the tube snaps into that fill tray. And so it forms a fairly tight seal. So you don't, even though I, I made that mess of, of overfilling, um, it, it doesn't really sort of run down between the tube and the fill tray and get onto the tube itself, on the outside of the tube. And so um, it, uh, it, it, it's fairly clean. So it's not like it, if it hardens there, it's almost going to glue the, uh, the tube into that fill tray. So you're not going to have that issue. My, these set for, for only, gosh, maybe 15, 20 minutes, uh, and that's it. So, so like I said, from pretty much start to finish here, you're, you're looking at, you could probably do it in about an hour, maybe a little bit longer as you pull together everything, but about an hour's time to make 20, uh, 25 tubes of, of lip balm. Um, is there any shrinkage as the lip balm cools in the tube? Yes, that's a good question. Uh, as, as this hot liquid cools, it does sort of sink down in, and that's one of the reasons why I sort of overfill like I did, so that when you scrape it off, it basically shears the, the top flat rather than leaving a slight depression. Um, but uh, typically, it's not going to sink down below the level of that fill uh, tray if you sort of overfill like I did. And so when you scrape off the top, you're going to end up with a nice flat top to, to it. The one thing you do want to be careful of is sometimes you may end up with a, uh, a little bit of a hollow spot in the center, and you want to make sure that you, as it cools, maybe top it off to fill up at that, uh, that hollow spot. Um, uh, someone here commenting on, the, uh, on a microwave just that it could overheat the, the, the liquid to perhaps flaming temperature. That's definitely a concern. You want to watch that if you do use a microwave. Um, what is a reasonable price to ask for a tube? Um, so it, it depends a little bit on your market. Um, people sell them as inexpensively as a dollar. Um, some people sell them uh, for, for a few dollars. Probably two dollars is probably a fairly reasonable price. Uh, it's, it's not too expensive that someone's going to balk at it. Um, and, and yet it's a, it's a good profit margin. Um, just to give you a, a sense, let me do some uh, quick math here. Uh, the tubes themselves, um, uh, if you buy just a pack of 25, which is the smallest pack we've got, they're about 32 cents a tube. And, and all those other ingredients, uh, of course, the, uh, that quart, that was a quart of olive oil, um, that's going to be, that's about $10, um, but that, that's going to go a long way. So if you're, if you're in the dollar range, you're going to be cutting it pretty close on your margin, but it all depends on, on uh, what your, uh, your market will bear. Let's see, what strength vitamin E capsule did you use? It was, um, it was the thousand, let's see, I think I, here it is, here's, here's, there we go, 1000 IU, um, and, and there, there's my, the brand that, uh, that I used and, and everything else, 100 soft gels, um, so that'll give you a sense of, uh, of what we had there. Um, uh, uh, where can you find the recipe again? I'll put that back up, but this webinar will be uploaded to our uh, website in a day or so. Where'd that recipe go? Um, so you can find it there, and those are free for viewing. Um, where do we obtain the small tin pots? We've got those on our website and in our catalog as well. Um, see here we'll take um, 
We'll take one last question. Uh, why do you need a second pour to fill the hole in the center after the first, first pour? I think it just looks better. Um, it just if if you have a hole going down the center, um, it's it's not going to be all that problematic. But it just I think from an aesthetic standpoint, from a, a, a quality standpoint, it just looks better to have that hole filled in. It used to be, you know, a lot of these tubes years ago. Um, when you spun the bottom, the th there's a threaded spindle inside the tube. I can remember that threaded spindle used to actually simply rely on the hardness of the lip balm to sort of push it up as, as you spun it. Um, now there's actually a little plastic plunger in that's threaded, so, so you have less likelihood of sort of stripping it out. But if you had a, a hole down the center years ago, it used to create problems with being able to sort of advance the tube, the chapstick out of the tube. Um, but from an aesthetic point standpoint, um, I think that uh, it's just nice to fill it in. Um, there's one other question, why, why you didn't uh, have shea or, or uh, cocoa butter um, in my, my recipe? Um, I could. I could have. Uh, I've made it before with shea butter. Um, I, I tend to like things a little bit more natural, and so a lot of times when I make it myself, for myself or friends or family, uh, I don't add essential oils, and so I tend to stay away from the cocoa butter as well for that point standpoint, just because you do have a little bit of that cocoa odor, which some people like. I don't know. It's not, a, it's not offensive by any stretch, um, but I, for whatever reason, just tend to stick with cocoa, uh, coconut oil or shea butter, but you can certainly substitute them. Again, you may have to adjust your, your recipe a little bit. Um, with that, we are now uh, past our um, 7 o'clock deadline. I'd like to thank you all for uh, participating this evening uh, and joining me. I hope that uh, it's been helpful for you. I hope that you go forth and make some lip balm. Again, it's incredibly easy. Uh, it's, it's once you sort of know the process and have done it once. Um, it takes very little time uh, with, with quite a bit of product, fairly uh, low expense to produce it. If you want to just give it away as gifts or stocking stuffers around this holiday season, whatever the case may be, um, but give it a shot. It's, it's, it's quite a bit of fun. It's a good project, too, for kids that are a little older that can handle being around the hot liquids. Uh, they make great presents for them to bring in to teachers or whatever the case may be. Um, so it's just a wonderful craft, a good project uh, this time of year now that our bees are, are starting to think about hunkering down when the cold weather finally sets in. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, good luck, and if you have any questions, just give us a holler here at the bee farm. We'll be more than happy to answer them the best we can. Have a good night. Thank you. Uh, goodbye. <laughs>